Hi everyone, this is Leonard, and today I'm going to share with you a session entitled Getting Started with Jenkins Configuration as Code. A bit about myself, I work as a software delivery uh, consultant, helping various companies uh, maintaining their Jenkins and also giving uh, advice on the best practices of using Jenkins uh, configuration as code. I also help uh, some of these uh, software teams uh, build up their software delivery pipelines using Jenkins pipeline, which is a declarative way of writing all these build steps as code so that uh, Jenkins can load all these uh, build steps uh, easily without going through the manual steps of typing all these uh, build steps inside the Jenkins uh, user interface. So this session is actually a culmination of uh, my experiences uh, working with these companies uh, for the past few years. And I hope that uh, you all can uh, benefit from it and also have a better overview on how to get started with Jenkins configuration as code. So before we dive deeper into the nitty gritty uh, configuration uh, in the text files, let's take a step back and also look into what actually uh, defines or uh, build up all these uh, components in Jenkins as code. So in the today's uh, uh, world, we use a lot of tools and we want to maintain it as easy as possible. So one of the uh, main recommendations is that we want all these configurations, all this uh, setup, everything could be uh, configured from text files. That would be really nice for us. It improves readability, traceability, and also it helps uh, one another to build out the team so that each and everyone also can contribute to this uh, uh, software delivery uh, process. And first of all, the first uh, main pillar of Jenkins as code is definitely Jenkins configuration as code. A bit of a bit history regarding a bit of a history regarding uh, Jenkins configuration as code project. This project was actually uh, started a few years back when Cloud Bees and Pragma uh, combined forces into uh, building up this project, and as a result. Uh, the project uh, has this plugin uh, that can be loaded by Jenkins and so this could enable Jenkins to read all this uh, configuration as code from text files and also uh, populate all these settings inside the uh, uh, application. And the second pillar which is Jenkins pipeline. Jenkins pipeline is a declarative way that we can write uh, all these build steps uh, in, in Groovy syntaxes so that uh, all these individual projects, when Jenkins load them, it recognizes that this is a Jenkins pipeline file so that it can uh, automatically load the build steps and also you have this build steps properly uh, set up for you without going through the uh, settings of each project and also configure it again and again and sometimes error uh, is easily uh, happen when you do all this copy paste. And the third main pillar of Jenkins as code is Jenkins shared library. When we have multiple projects using similar steps, similar functions, in Jenkins pipeline, we want to actually extract those common functionality and put them in Jenkins uh, shared library. For example, if we have uh, a few 
Node.js projects that have similar build steps, similar uh, test steps, and also similar packaging steps. We want to actually extract those uh, common functionalities and put them in Jenkins shared library so that we want to avoid uh, duplication of codes and also ease the maintenance of the code too. So, so these three main pillars consist of what makes up what we call that Jenkins as code. But in this presentation, we will focus mainly on Jenkins configuration as code uh, part. So next, we walk through the agenda. So first of all, we are going to see how we set up Jenkins from scratch. Maybe some of you have already uh, know uh, how tedious is it to set up. And the next one is that we want to, uh, I want to show you how we can install Jenkins configuration scope plugin through the user interface. And third and fourth is that I'm going to go in, uh, into the codes, which, uh, make up of this, uh, real life examples of how we can use uh, Jenkins Docker or Docker Compose definition to run Jenkins inside a container and also we will go through uh, quite many of these uh, Jenkins configuration as code snippets in YAML syntax and then I will show you what is it that uh, how we can get it up and running we will go through, we'll go through some uh, maintenance steps which is uh, quite regular in uh, using Jenkins and I would also share with you my recommendations and considerations if you are thinking of using Jenkins configuration as code in your projects. So first up, Jen we will set up Jenkins from scratch. So in this example, I'll just use a plain docker run command and we'll just run uh, Jenkins uh, long-term support uh, container image tag. And the first page we will see is that, you know, we need to unlock Jenkins with the initial admin password. We need to install all these plugins that we need. We need to create the first administrative user. And we need to give it a Jenkins URL. And also, after all this, we finally have a Jenkins ready, as you can see here on the page. So, if we reflect back in all this uh, key this step of uh, setting up Jenkins, it's not so uh, user friendly if we're going to do it uh, every time we set up a new Jenkins, right? So now, the second part is that we're going to walk through how we can install Jenkins configuration as code uh, plugin through its user interface. So first of all, we're going to go to Jenkins and also go to manage Jenkins and we can see that uh, we click on plugin manager we come to this page and we can search for configuration as code and we can select configuration as code as we can see here on the screenshot it's a uh, version 1.35 which is obsolete by now and we install and we wait it to restart so that it can load the new plugins and to take it into use. And if we go uh, log into Jenkins again and uh, click manage Jenkins, when we scroll to the, I think in one of the sections of the settings, we can see configuration as code. So here is the main page where we can work with uh, configuration as code from its user interface. So here we can actually replace the configuration with a configuration from a URL or a path. We can also download the configuration and view the existing configuration if we want to. But bear in mind that the, to download the configuration sometimes doesn't give you the, the correct picture of the configuration because uh, there are some uh, export uh, functionality. It's not uh, ready for, for production use. So 
there is also some references that I would recommend uh, all to, to go through is the documentation link which exists uh, in your Jenkins after you install this plugin and also the JSON schema if you want to view existing uh, uh, settings. For example, you can see here, this is the code reference for configuration as code. You can see how the, the top level uh, uh, values that we can set, deprecated, restricted, unknown version, and there is a long list of uh, uh, available options for you to, 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 to use. And this is the JSON uh, schema where you can actually go into each and every uh, raw data of the JSON uh, uh, specification from the Jenkins configuration as code. Um, yeah. So now we will walk through the Jenkins uh, Docker or Docker Compose definition. Sorry about that. Uh, I assume that most uh, uh, folks here are familiar with some kind of uh, Docker or container knowledge because I will touch a bit on that. So here we can see that we are using um, multi-stage uh, Docker Compose. So first of all, I would base my image on an upstream Jenkins uh, container image and I would tag it as production Jenkins and I would give it the label, uh, maintainer, and uh, Docker group is actually uh, used for if you want to use uh, Jenkins in the Docker in Docker context, but I will discuss about that in the, later on. So here, the interesting part starts from here. Is we can see that uh, we copy the list of plugins into USR Share Jenkins Rough Plugins .txt file. So we copy this list of plugins for Jenkins to read through and load later on and we can see here in the last uh, line of this uh, screenshot it actually uh, extract the list of plugins one by one and then install it to the Jenkins uh, instance and here we give it some uh, Java options that uh, tells Jenkins that hey I don't want to run the startup widget wizard again like we have seen in the previous step so uh, everything should be uh, configured by code. And also furthermore, uh, down the Docker file for Jenkins, you can see that we also want to copy some startup script uh, uh, and we put it in var Jenkins home in a Groovy so that when whatever Jenkins startup, you can actually uh, put this uh, run this script upon startup. And also we can copy the script approval.xml uh, signature to the Jenkins in instance also. And if you want to fix the time zone issue, we can actually uh, copy a time zone uh, dot GUI into init dot, uh, into the Jenkins uh, rough init GUI dot B folder. And the last, but also quite important step is that we want to copy all this configuration into the USR share Jenkins rough configuration. So there are few steps that we can do this. We can actually combine everything into a single file called Jenkins.yaml, as you can see here, but this would result in a very large uh, file, maybe, yeah, which might be hard to to scroll up or down just to find the correct values. But uh, what we want to, what we recommend is that we speed up the, the configuration. We can have like a YAML file called general, a YAML call, file called the security. We can have a YAML file called users, for example, and so forth. So that it's easier to, to you know, uh, modularize the configuration. So, and further down the road, and we can see that here is using uh, the multi-stage uh, Docker definition, 
Docker file definition, we can actually base from production Jenkins and so we, uh, make development Jenkins. Why I want to do that is that uh, usually when I work with Jenkins, I don't work on at production level. So I want like uh, a place where I can play with and also you know differentiate the user interface for for local development Jen uh, instance so that I remember that okay I'm not messing around with the production uh, Jenkins. So this is just some customization where I explicitly mark uh, this production Jenkins as a development so that I don't mess around with it. So, yes, so this is the Docker Compose uh, configuration. So we can see that in Jenkins, we have uh, in services, we have one service called Jenkins, where it would uh, take the view context from Jenkins directory and load the Docker file. And we want the target to be development Jenkins. And yeah, container name is Jenkins, host name is Jenkins, and so forth. We want to export port 8080 and 50,000. And um, we also want to mount uh, the the Maven settings and also the SSH uh, uh, settings to Jenkins home. And also we want to mount the Docker volumes to the uh, container Jenkins home folder too. And in the environment, we can actually uh, give it a J, uh, CAS Jenkins config and give it a path where Jenkins would recognize uh, this environment variable and load all this uh, configuration from that path. And we give it a secret and also env file Jenkins secrets .env. Yes, so now we have uh, go through that how these uh, Jenkins are being uh, set up and now we want to further uh, go into the nitty gritty of Jenkins configuration as code snippets. So first of all, we can see that this is uh, the first uh, configuration that we can uh, see. And we can see that, uh, for example, if we want to give a customized system message, we can actually, uh, you know, write some system message, example, maintenance period or some public announcement. We can actually write uh, using multi-line YAML syntax. And we also can de de define a number of executors, uh, what mode is it running, and STM checkout we try counts, and the label for the uh, primary Jenkins instance. For example, here I give it the Jenkins label. So, so instead of going through the user interface to configure the system message, and we can actually uh, put that in a text file and load it through Jenkins configuration as code plugin. And next one, we want to look into credentials because we we want to also ease the the use of uh, Jenkins with uh, uh, commonly common standards of credentials. But here we can see that we. Uh, Define a basic SSH user private key that can be used uh, by GitHub so that we can clone, so, so that Jenkins can clone uh, repositories from GitHub uh, for Jenkins to use and uh, build. We can specify what is the private key content and the passphrase through the uh, secrets.env file that uh, I've shown you earlier. And this is uh, an example of how we can define uh, jobs in the seedjobs.yaml file. We can actually specify uh, this uh, job DSL script. Let's say, for example, we want to uh, load seed job from 
a GitHub repo. A seed job is like the initial uh, job that would populate Jenkins with uh, jobs. So you can say like it's like a Genesis uh, build job. So we can actually define it using job DSL syntax, and you can see here that we are using this remote uh, repository and also give it the credentials GitHub SSH key and yeah and various other configurations uh, if you want to refer to but do note that job dsl support is not included by default in jenkins so if you do not have job dsl plugin installed in your fresh jenkins you would actually see this error no configurator for root element jobs so remember that uh some steps in your configuration or some uh, modules in your configuration would uh, rely on external plugins as well so take note of that and this is another example where we would define a global library where uh, it tells jenkins hey i have a shared pipeline library that i would want to use in Jenkins. Please load this shared library from this GitHub repository, for example, and using these credentials. And by using this uh, declaration, so uh, when you go, when Jenkins is uh, being loaded and up and running, you would see this uh, shared library is available for use. Here is also another example of how we can also define nodes. Uh, we can give it the uh, nodes with the uh, means agents or in build agents that we can use to, to build uh, different kinds of, uh, uh, we can link different kinds of platform using build agents, for example. So we don't want to strain the primary Jenkins with uh, build uh, jobs. We want to actually, it, it is a good practice to actually distribute all our builds uh, to, to agents so that each agent can, can um, build and also send back the results to the primary Jenkins. And here we can see that uh, we have an agent called, which is Java based agent, and we can give it how that this agent can connect to the primary Jenkins using an SSH key and you know all this retention strategy, uh, remote file system, home directory, how many executors that uh, the agent could have. So we can actually specify it all here. here. And here also it's uh, quite important how we can actually define security settings in uh, Jenkins configuration as code. For example, we want to, in this example, we want to use script security in the job DSL security configuration. And also remember that Jenkins uh, pipeline is uh, it's, it's a sandbox based and built environment. So there's uh, many methods, uh, many Guru methods that are not approved to run in this sandbox environment. So if our build pipelines or Jenkins pipeline requires us to, to sort of use some of the methods, we have to remember to, to add these approved signatures in this list of uh, uh, signatures so that uh, Jenkins pipeline can actually use these uh, functions without hitting the sandbox exception. And here we also look into an example how we can have uh, to set up a local user, um, name administrator and a default password called change it. So uh, a bit about this syntax is that this is a YAML syntax where it specifies if 
Jenkins underscore administrator underscore username does not exist in the environment variable. So let's use a default one named administrator. The same applies to password also. So this would actually ensure us that we would get the default value if nothing is defined. So here we also uh, uh, disable sign up on Jenkins by putting it to false. Yeah. As an alternative, if we don't want to go uh, and use local users, we can actually use LDAP uh, user directory. So we can actually configure LDAP uh, in such way whereby we give it the manager DN uh, path and manager password secrets, the root DN and the server and so forth so that you can actually link them to your corporate LDAP uh, domain so that Jenkins uh, can you know automatically link to your user directory in your own uh, corporate uh, environment. But uh, do note that multiple security rooms are not currently supported what does it mean is that uh, the previous two sh slides shows you that you can uh, set up local users and also you can actually um, link LDAP uh, user directory however we do not have the options of actually using two uh, security rooms at once. That would mean that if we go with uh, LDAP uh, user directory and if LDAP user directory for whatever reason is not accessible or it's, it's uh, having some network issues that we can not authenticate it with, we would actually be locked out from Jenkins. So just, just be aware of that. And here we can actually also define the authorization strategy for for uh, our users in Jenkins. For example, we want to allow Acme super users to administer uh, Jenkins. So we don't want any uh, users inside Jenkins to have administrative rights, for example. And here we can define remoting security, agents protocol, and slave agent port, port, for example. Yes, and this one is uh, the Docker Compose file that shows us how we can define agent Java so that we can actually define. Um, this agent as a Docker container so that the primary Jenkins in Docker container can connect to the uh, agent in another Docker container also. And we also can specify the tools that Jenkins needs in this uh, configuration. For example, we can actually specify that, hey, Jenkins need git, so I would specify that, okay, let's ask Jenkins to install git with this declaration. And also we can ask Jenkins, hey Jenkins, I want Maven to be installed here too. And I will give it a name, name Maven tree, and install source and what the specific Maven that uh, it can install. And uh, in this uh, example, we can also see that we can actually define some of the different views of uh, for for users if, to be available for users. For example, we can have a primary view, and we can have a list view, for example. And we can see here that there's a build monitor view. And do note that build monitor is also uh, depending on an external plugin, so be mindful of that. So, we have seen uh, some of the 
configuration as code snippets. So let's see how it's up and running. So for example, when I uh, use the this code snippet that I shown you earlier, we would be seeing a user interface as such presented on the screen. We can see that here we can see uh, it's a development Jenkins. It's so obvious that I can mess around with with it without uh, fear, so that I can actually uh, do some uh, development work on maintaining Jenkins. As you can see here, there's a tree at this uh, M here, which means that there's some actions needs to be taken. For example, a new Jenkins version uh, is available that you can upgrade to, or some plugins that you can upgrade. Which brings us to the maintenance stage. So if you click on that, you see here, as I mentioned, new Jenkins LTS is available for download, so we can use. So we don't need to download in this instance, but I will just remember the new version string. And also we can see here some of the plugins needs to be updated too. So we can actually click go to plugin manager. Yeah. So remember the string from just now. We we'll actually replace it in the Docker file and voila, we would have upgraded our Jenkins using a new version of LTS. And if we click on the go to plugin manager, as I mentioned, we would go to this page, plugin manager, and we can see that a list of plugins that is available for upgrades. So we can actually go through the list and also um, change this in the plugins.txt file so that we can easily uh, trace the changes of plugins for Jenkins. This is, uh, I think that this is a quite an improvement compared of using this one, this uh, upgrading path through the user interface because this is much more clearer. We can actually uh, fall back if, if we, we notice that some of the newer plugins is breaking some of our existing functionalities. So we can actually you know roll back and, and use uh, the previous one. So I think this is a very uh, nice improvement. So here we would come uh, to some recommendations that uh, I've uh, collected throughout this few years. First of all, store all your configuration as code using version control system, for example, Git. It helps to trace the changes and also it helps to identify problems. And you can also roll back if there's something that's not working. And uh, one other thing is that I would recommend folks not to use Docker in Docker. What does it mean is that uh, some uh, some organization would want the primary Jenkins to build everything. So the primary Jenkins would spin up another Docker container image using the same Docker socket and also build from there. But uh, this just would uh, mess up a lot of things so if you can avoid it please avoid it <laughs> and aim for stateless jenkins what would i mean with that is that um you know jenkins when we do a build we have like you know build one build two build three and so forth for each and every different project types so if you want to aim for stateless jenkins it would mean that we don't want to be dependent on anything that Jenkins generate. For example, build ID. Your artifacts, your your logs should not be depending on uh, build IDs. Why would I say so? Is that we want Jenkins to always be reproducible in a clean state. So it's okay that uh, we, we trace all these changes using git commits uh, checksums. That's fine. But 
stay away from uh, using build IDs, for example. Separate YAML configuration files, as I have shown you earlier. And use linter because YAML can be very sensitive in tabs, spaces. So use a linter. It helps you a lot, even in Docker, uh, Docker file. Use Jenkins pipeline as this is the way forward for projects to be integrated in Jenkins. You don't want to go through the user interface to configure your build step every each and every single time. Use Jenkins shared library if you have uh, common functionalities that you will share with many projects. And assess unit, unit testing for Jenkins pipeline. For example, in this instance, Jenkins pipeline unit. So if you have the time, I would recommend that uh, we look into unit testing for Jenkins pipeline. And here are some of the considerations that if uh, for using Jenkins configuration as code. Customization. As you can see that I did do some customization on my Jenkins uh, development instance. Yes, that is, that is good, but uh, do bear in mind that don't uh, customize too much because that will also add, add to your maintainer's work. Helper scripts. So we have uh, for 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 this example we have like uh, an instance where we have this helper scripts where we get the uh, public key from not public key but the a recognized known host for GitHub so that we can we automate that step so that we, uh, Jenkins wouldn't be stopped of asking hey do you want me to connect to this new host from GitHub because that is obviously uh, recognizable so we don't want to repeat the steps every time we start from a fresh Jenkins and yeah Keep it to minimal helper scripts, that would be helpful. Unavailability, that's uh, inevitable when we do uh, maintenance of Jenkins. We have to take Jenkins down, unfortunately. Uh, if you know some of the better ways to avoid that, please let me know. I would be interested to know how you solve that issue. Yeah, maintenance and availability. And also, do note that. Plugin dependencies is still uh, still quite an issue here, so you cannot just be selective of uh, updating one plugins but not updating the other dependency plugin. So bear in mind when doing a plugins upgrade because it might be tricky sometimes. Upstream resources. Uh, what do I mean by this is that we have to beware that sometimes upstream resources are not available it may be due to slow networks or the server is uh, overloaded by requests i don't know but there was some time that uh, i was working on jenkins configuration as code and i was not able to to finish the uh, downloading of the plugins and installing it on the docker container image so that was frustrating for a few days, but uh, it's sort of uh, resolved by itself. So do bear in mind that if upstream resources are not available, what we are going to do. So bear in mind that. Jenkins home directory, and it ties back to the recommendation that I have earlier. Aim for stateless Jenkins. You don't want Jenkins home directory to contain uh, important files that you want to to keep or other important uh, files or information should be stored in different services for example what I mean by that is that your artifacts artifacts your build binaries should not be stored in Jenkins home directory it should be stored in somewhere for example in Nexus uh, 
Sonatype Nexus or, or Artifactory, for example, and maybe your test logs or your audit uh, code analysis logs should go to uh, Sonacube, for example. Yeah. So we want to avoid uh, overly depending on Jenkins Home Directory as we want the flexibility to actually start from a fresh Jenkins and from a without any uh, remnants from previous uh, Jenkins runtime. Secrets handling. As you can see earlier in my code snippet, I was using secrets.eme file, so I actually put uh, all my secrets in plain text inside the file. So yeah, that's not a good way, I understand, but yeah, we, we, we must improve our secrets handling. Uh, think of uh, other services like uh, HashiCorp Vault so that uh, it can actually do uh, secrets handling in a more secure way. And last but not least, perhaps you don't need Jenkins at all. You might, uh, other CI CD tools might be more efficient for you. For example, Circus CI or uh, Azure DevOps. Yeah. So there are many, many alternatives out there. So do give them a consideration too. And yes, uh, feel free to reach me out on uh, uh, Twitter or or through the contacts available through this conference. And uh, yeah, have fun exploring uh, Jenkins configuration as code and have a nice day.